All right, what's going on there, folks? Good evening, it is, or uh, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful weekend, Saturday, December 9th, 2023. It is about 12.15 p.m. here, California time. Nice and sunny, about 60 degrees out here. Earthquake activity shows a 4.9 earthquake up here south of Iceland along this plate boundary once again. Seen quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up here overnight. First going to jump into uh, the Southern California earthquake activity. Got a little bit of swarming going on here in the area of the Salton Sea uh, over the last couple hours here. Seen some twos, in including a three-pointer, showing up in this earthquake swarm here, which sits just at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Always get a little concerned when we see earthquake swarming occurring around this area. Put that together along with the enhanced earthquake activity we've seen here over the last few days. We did see some twos and threes up here in Southern Cal. Uh, this gets me a little bit nervous when we see some swarming kicking up around this area. Got about 12 earthquakes or so in the last 24 hours. Looks like it started off here about uh, 10 o'clock my time with a 1.5. So going to watch this area. Definitely uh, showing some increasing activity out here this morning. Like I said, there's been movement uh, across the eastern edge here of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. This is the North American side of the plate boundary. A lot going on down here in Southern California around a plate uh, plate boundary that's very capable of producing an 8.1. And it has been accumulating stress for quite some time. Uh, so keep an eye on that area. The Barrett Station right here is about the closest one I'm going to find here in Southern California. That's showing some of that earthquake activity. That looks like that's going to be the uh, uh, potentially the 2.8 that's popping up here at uh, 12.06. Uh, that would put it roughly about here, it looks like, this time frame, I believe. Let's see here. Kind of hard to tell exactly. Somewhere around that time frame. Either way, we've seen a, a couple earthquakes here in the last literally within the last 10 minutes and they were all cluttered together so just keep an eye on this area things are uh getting interesting down there in southern california all right let's back out of here and go to uh, another interesting region here seeing some earthquake activity around the bite fracture zone it looks like uh this is around the orakinus ridge which sits up here across the iceland area this is a divergent boundary this uh, plate boundary has been stirring up a little bit of excitement there and concern across the Grindavik area of Iceland recently. Overnight, uh, this, well, obviously this movement is well south of this region, but what takes place here across this divergent boundary could affect areas upstream here into the Iceland region. Uh, we did see about 18 earthquakes here of uh, decent sized magnitudes here in the last 24 hours. Uh, quite a few upper fours. The largest looks to be a 5.3. A couple 5.3s in there. Again, that's in the last 24 hours. Uh, the last one, though, 4.9, still within that cluster. So, anything going on here across the Iceland area that we need to know about? Let's take a look here. It looks like we have seen a little bit of heightened earthquake activity across this region of Iceland. Of course, a rift zone, divergent boundary out here. Region northeast of Grindavik shows a little bit more enhanced earthquake activity here today. Uh, looks like we got a 1.3 coming in somewhere way up north here, but uh, I'm a little bit more concerned around this area of Grindavik. This is the area where that magma intrusion has been taking place. Been a lot of talk stirring up here about an eruption taking place here around the Hagafell and the Slingarfell area of Iceland that sits roughly right about here. So today we're seeing elevated earthquake activity along with the divergent boundary south of here. Uh, definitely keep this region in mind. Um, earthquake activity definitely elevated. Now, nothing has been put out uh, today. It is the weekend. I'm sure if something major was going on, they would definitely put some type of update out. Most likely we'll get uh, a further update on this uptick here Monday. But uh, this latest update here was put out a couple days ago. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, again, whatever takes place here across this area of the plate boundary does have an adverse effect up here across this region of Iceland. Did see some activity here around the British Virgin Islands as well. 5.7 earthquake coming in uh, northeast of Cruise Bay. 
about seven kilometers deep here across this region. Puerto Rico Trench, of course, sits right around here. We have been seeing a little bit of enhanced earthquake activity out here in the past oh, 30 days or so up around the Puerto Rico Trench. So just keeping an eye on that. It is capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes, but for now, 5.7. Uh, down into the South America area, most of this movement here from last night, I uh, did see a handful of earthquakes there. Uh, this morning, mostly smaller microquakes though, including what looks like a 2.6. Uh, coming in the last 30 minutes or so, pretty deep though, 130 kilometers into that subduction zone. Okay, let's take a little closer look up here at the states. Um, one little earthquake last night in Ohio. That was kind of interesting. A little 3.0 Jackson Center, Ohio. Occasionally we do get earthquakes up here in that region. Uh, not a whole lot going on through the New Madrid seismic zone. Oil fields of Texas getting hit. Uh, and we did see a little bit of activity stirring up here around the Grand Teton National Park. 3.6 coming in. Uh, let's see if we got any movement going on across Yellowstone real quick. Just I like to look at this see if we got any uh, interesting activity got a handful of earthquakes here it looks like in the last 30 minutes or so uh, it's going to be this little small spiky activity there's that uh, earthquake activity that stirred up south of Yellowstone but fairly close in the vicinity so that's why it showed up pretty nicely uh, across the majority of the seismograph stations there but as uh, far as local seismic activity at Yellowstone uh, minimal for now Mount Hood, well, doesn't look like we've seen anything further overnight. We did see a handful of earthquakes there yesterday, but nothing being reported today. Northern California, a little spotty, not a whole lot going on. All the action right now seems to be centered around the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, look at the 2.5 map and above. Show some of that increasing activity here just on the, again, on the eastern side of this plate boundary. And uh, as you can see here, Got a cluster of activity above the 2.5 range uh, in this region. So just a heads up, uh, going to continue the earthquake watch here uh, for Southern California just due to this elevated activity. Whenever things kick up like that, definitely good to be on guard. Uh, New Zealand did see some activity yesterday. That was a 4.2. Kermadec Islands yesterday as well. Let's see if we got anything uh, new to chat about. Looks like maybe a 3.4 or so. And uh, 3.5 deeper into the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Pretty quiet out here across the Vanuatu area. Of course, this has been the region seeing uh, elevated activity here over the past week. So a little bit of break there. Seeing clustering migration going on once again around the Philippines and the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, specifically around the, um, the Banda Sea region, which is right up here where this activity is taking place right now. 5.0, just north of the Banda Sea. Uh, 50 kilometers deep for that 5.0. Australia, just off the uh, southern coast here. Is this the southwestern coast? I'm not for sure how they uh, classify their regions out here, but uh, just off the coast, 3.1. Coming in there to the Alaska area. The Kuro Kamachaka remains quiet. Not a whole lot in Alaska. It seems like, uh, looks like we've seen a couple twos and threes stirring up there. Uh, across the rest of the world, a little four-pointer out pretty deep in the Mediterranean. And one earthquake down in South Africa it looks like a little 3.1. Let's see what we got going on here across Hawaii. I uh, forgot to cover this last night. Just been I was outside barbecue and keep an eye on things. But we did see a 3.4 Mauna Loa about seven kilometers deep. And also some interesting activity over here uh, with a 3.6. So elevated activity across the Big Island as a whole lately of course we did see um, a pretty decent uh, size earthquake out here uh, southeast of the Kilauea volcano a couple days ago that earthquake coming in at a 5.1 very shallow here uh, let's take a look at the informational statement here with regards to Kilauea volcano see if we got anything new going on or to report Kilauea daily update this was definitely put out uh, today it looks like the volcano is currently not erupting uh, and they're just chatting about uh, the typical earthquake activity that's occurring out here. The summit seismicity um, tilt meter remains elevated, but saw a slight decline in earthquake rates. All right, let's see what else we got here. I've seen a little informational statement uh, from them 
I believe that was uh, about that 3.6 near the uh, Mauna Loa area. Well, let's see. 3.6 occurred two miles west-southwest. Okay, so that's going to be... Bring this back up here. I think they're talking about this one. Uh, the earthquake had no apparent impact on any of these volcanoes here. Either way, you know, they're saying that uh, it did not have any uh, impact on the nearby volcanoes. There's something brewing underneath this region. Uh, definitely, I believe something's a little bit bigger is headed this direction here. I think we'll see an increase in the uh, further magma below just because of all the elevated activity here recently. Let's check out the tilt meter, see what's going on here today. Uh, that gives us a good indicator of what's going on below the surface as far as inflation goes. And UWE station here still shows uh, elevated activity. In fact, it looks like we reached up above our previous level. That was uh, yeah, earlier this morning, it looks like we reached up here. This is the past two days showing a, a very short period of deflation. We're now back on the uptrend here of inflation. And this recent inflation event puts us at the highest level seen since 2018 this was our previous highest level uh, but each cycle here in the tilt meter gets higher and higher and higher and higher and if uh, things continue at this rate we'll see this go up uh, much further but the question is how much uh, how much more strain is building or is this area able to to handle as far as the strain building below um, definitely a, a pretty good decent amount of magma subsurface regions trying to push up uh let's see what we got for one of these cams here take a look at the lava lake cam i still i'm still kind of leaning towards more of the activity uh striking down here south of the crater area in terms of new fissure activity opening up i just clicked on that one i meant to click uh one of these there's a look at the area today looks clear slightly windy up there um but notice that there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, condensation here. When it's cloudy and rainy, cooler and moist, we'll see these hot volcanic gases here uh, creating more uh, dramatic type views with the condensation of the heated areas below. Of course, anything hot, right? You put it in colder weather, it creates that condensation and create clouds. Basically, that's what it is. And uh, it looks a little bit more dramatic. But today... As you can see, volcanic gases seeping out from the lava lake area, which it's been doing for quite a while, but no elevated activity to note here, at least in the visual perspective there at Lava Lake. Obviously, uh, inflation is continuing, and uh, we'll no doubt continue to watch that activity. Uh, but Southern California, look at that. That is a little crazy. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, things been rocking and rolling out there recently. Uh, space weather activity, but that's just minimal. 8.1 would not be good. Uh, flaring activity. Well, we're looking at uh, quite a few sea flares over the last 24 hours. And um, mainly from this one active region down here, which is uh, going to be drifting off the western limb, out of sight, out of mind. From our perspective, um, today and tomorrow, we're left with uh, this one, and this has been a source of numerous M flares and C flares. It still has quite a bit of magnetic complexity within that uh, sunspot core. Looks like it wants to play a little bit of jump rope or two there uh, in this uh, little feature. These magnetic arches are actually really cool. Um, but a lot of times we can see those spark up and uh, get some large flares taking place. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 40, X flare around 5% chance. Let's look at the magnetic structure here of 3513. Still looks fairly complex here within this region. Uh, it does show a little bit of decaying, uh, but we'll continue to watch this region here for some flaring. This area down here really took off. Uh, that is a source of a, a pretty recent large M flare. But again, everything's away from Earth and it will continue to drift further across the western limb to where it won't even be visible here soon. Uh, and what's behind our visible sunspots is not a whole lot. We do have some on the southeastern limb of the sun that we're kind of watching. But I think our main threat is going to be this one right here that's currently just about 
bullseye facing the earth. Uh, so if anything does blast off far as the CME goes, that will no doubt be earth directed. We'll continue to watch that and report back on it. Severe weather outlook today. looks like they have, an ad they have added an enhanced zone for some severe weather. Um, with a 10% hatched area for tornado probability. Now, now that includes the possibility of seeing an EF2 or an EF5 tornado within about 25 miles of a point. So heads up, you should be heads up in general across this entire area. But this 10% zone is a region of the most dynamics taking place where we could see those, long, uh, those strong tornadoes developing. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Clarksville, Jackson, Franklin, Hendersonville, portion here of Alabama as well. Just be weather uh, wary today. Keep your eyes on the sky and um, hopefully we don't have any reports here of tornadoes or any damage. But there is that possibility of it taking place today along with some wind and some hail threats. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here again. Keep an eye on SoCal. Uh, one little earthquake there in Yellowstone right now. Uh, we'll just kind of see how this day plays out. Either way, interesting development out here. We'll catch you guys back a little bit later on this evening. Take care, folks.